I always kind of go middle of the road with Roman Reigns, if, if we're being realistic. I really don't think I could be classified as a fan. I don't think I could be classified as a full-on hater. I can go a little bit defender at times, but I can also go give me a freaking break at times. He kind of in general just creates a sort of sense of almost ambivalence. Just malaise more so just a guy that doesn't evoke the type of emotions good or bad out of me that he does for a lot of other people and I think part of it is Cena fatigue after so many years of seeing the same type of techniques used with Cena you get to the point where you kind of get beaten down by it and you've just learned to cope and adjust and that's kind of what it is I think sometimes Roman Reigns gets unfairly blamed for too many of the problems with WWE. Ultimately, one guy that isn't the owner of the company is not going to fix everything no matter how good or great they were. If Hulk Hogan was in the company today, Hulk Hogan could be a star, but then the company would do everything they could to make sure that he wasn't a star, and we'd probably look at him the same way. Same thing with Austin, same thing with Rock. If you think I'm crazy, you're insane. Because this company now literally goes out of their way to not create real, larger-than-life stars. They want props that they can quickly interchange. They're about marketing the brand, marketing events, marketing experience, not the individual talents. WrestleMania is a success because the company has transitioned away from marketing the individual stars to marketing the weekend, the event, the whole week, frankly, the experience. And it has worked for them contained within that. But in the grander scheme of things, it could be detrimental to their product. Now, the reason I'm bringing all this up is Roman Reigns, as the top guy, is going to be in a position where no matter what you do, certain segments of the fan base just aren't going to like him. And to a degree, that's okay in the sense that wrestling should be like a variety show where you have something for everybody. However, it is a concern because at some point in time, when you have a face of the franchise, that dude, I think about quarterback in the NFL, when all else fails, you need that quarterback, you want that quarterback, you have to be able to count on that quarterback to be able to lead the team and inspire, to be able to get more out of them to make others around them better than they ever thought or imagined possible. That's why it frustrates me as we go along in time and I see people kind of knock Magic Johnson and Larry Bird down the all-time rankings just a little bit in terms of greatest NBA players of all time. You're stupid if you do. Because for Christ's sakes, Magic comes into the league year one his team wins a championship. If I remember correctly, Bird's first year with the Celtics, they went from winning 20-something games to winning 60 games. Year two, winning a championship. There was clear, tangible evidence over the years. You could clearly see and understand that they make people around them better. And when all else failed, you counted on that dude. It's why LeBron James is so significantly better now as a player than he was maybe five or seven years ago when he was a little bit quicker, a little bit more athletic. Because he's figured out the game more from a mental standpoint. He's figured out how to get guys going at the right time. But also has a better understanding, more importantly, than at any point in time in his career, of the true alpha dog mentality. And when you look at the WWE, they discourage the alpha dog mentality. They don't want alpha dogs. They don't want the guy that can be the guy that when all else fails, you look to that dude. And it's not a good thing. Eras are defined by certain individuals. And even when you want to talk about Cena having his decade of dominance, you could kind of say he was an alpha dog for him, them. But that was by design and force than it was by organically happening and actually being merited. They would intentionally do things to always keep seen in that position. He was a massive prop. 
and it did hurt the product over the years. The defenders can say what they want, but it did. But he also wasn't that larger-than-life guy that was truly going to put a bunch of asses in the seats and make the company a ton of money. He wasn't. Same thing is going on here with Roman Reigns. So you get to the point where if you're not going to make him a true alpha dog, if you don't have the desire to because you want to have everybody be interchangeable, you want it to be about the shield, the brand of WWE, the names of the events, the events, the experience, the weekend, all that. And that's what they want to do because it's safe for them. And that's what the WWE is. They're not in the wrestling business. They're not even in the sports entertainment business. I mean, we need to get out of that mindset. They are in the running a stock business. And you can clearly see based off of the way they operate their business that they are in the running a stock business. And from a certain perspective, that makes sense because ultimately the WWE as a publicly traded company has shareholders to answer to. They have to produce in terms of their financials. They have to produce in terms of the dividend. But you also could get to a point where you worry too much about the stock and you don't run your damn company. But when we get to Roman Reigns, if you're not going to make him the true alpha dog, then at least figure out a way to where more of your overall audience can tolerate him. And I realize some of the people that watch are never going to like him no matter what. Okay? But some of them can be won over. And the way to not do that is making Roman Reigns some pathetic, blubbering, bitch, sympathy-wanting, craving, yearning, needing babyface. It doesn't work. Like, it's borderline insulting to fans' intelligence. And not just adult fans. You have kids, too, that are smart enough to figure this crap out and realize how stupid it is. You are consistently forcing and pounding a dude down people's throats, presenting him in such a way, but then not going all the way with him when it really matters, but you're still putting him in a position where the dude has main evented four straight WrestleMania. He's main evented four straight WrestleManias. All this talk about conspiracy and this and that and people holding him down is absolutely freaking ridiculous. He's supposed to be your top dog. You want to pretend like he's supposed to be a Samoan badass and a tough dude. And wrestling fans that have watched enough wrestling know that when you're talking about the Samoans, there's supposed to be a certain level of badassery that goes along with them. So there is an inherent understanding of that. But instead of the WWE truly embracing that, instead of the WWE truly going with that, they will at random times and at the worst possible times have Roman Reigns get beat down and try to do things to make him sympathetic. Don't. It does not work. Roman Reigns as a performer is not the type of guy that works when you try to force everybody to feel sorry for the dude. Now there are different ways to get somebody over as a great baby face. You can get them over sometimes just because they're so different. Sometimes they're incredible talents and they're just overall awesome. Sometimes it just happens organically over a period of time. The performer gets better. The fans appreciation for him gets better. There's a respect factor that's earned. Sometimes you have talents that are great at making people feel sad for them. You have those that are baby faces that can make people mad in the sense that they're mad that this guy is getting this and not the babyface. They're mad that this guy did this to the babyface. They're mad that the company is doing this to this babyface. But the problem is with Roman Reigns, he really evokes none of those emotions at all. They just can't figure out what to do with him. And that's what I don't get. On the one hand, they so stubbornly dig in their heels and they pretend like they don't care and they pretend like they don't care and for the most part, they act like they don't care and they don't really seem to care. But then they lack the courage to go all the way with the dude. I mean, you're going so far in 
you've taken a hundred pumps of that puss, you might as well cream pie the shit at this point. I'm just saying. But I thought they lost any chance they had with him and Lesnar on that road to WrestleMania when they put Reigns in the handcuffs and they're trying to get him sympathy by having him get beaten down repeatedly. No, you meet a badass with a badass in this case. Roman Reigns getting beat down and looking beat down is not something that's going to get the people to like him. It's going to be something that gets across as being sad and pathetic and yet another attempt, a pathetic attempt by the WWE to get a guy over in the wrong way. The WWE consistently does this with guys like Roman Reigns. They put them in bad situations. They put them in bad spots as a character and makes it almost impossible for these guys to be able to recover no matter what they did. He's not that type of dude. He's not a Hogan. Stop trying to make him a Hogan type. God, don't make him a Cena type. You're trying to make him a Cena type, except Roman can't really carry the mic. He's very Orton-like in that way. And when you look at Roman, and it's just, again, to me, it's so frustrating because we're talking about the conspiracies and this, but then he gets the title match at WrestleMania against Lesnar. Then he gets another title match at the Greatest Royal Rumble that he didn't deserve because he got beat clean at WrestleMania. Like, we just can't help ourselves. But you try to make people feel sorry for him and feel bad for him, and it doesn't work. And the problem is, when it comes to these things, is the people associated with WWE, in the WWE, some of the kiss-ass fuckboys on here and on the internet that kiss the company's ass because, again, we've gotten to this weird place where the wrestlers are the freaking fans now doing the podcast and the dumb crap and you got the fucking jerk-off nerd boys on the internet sitting there talking about wrestling, but they're actually wannabes in the wrestling business, so they have zero credibility whatsoever. How the hell could you ever take them seriously? Because when in doubt, they're going to kiss everybody's fucking ass because they're trying to get a damn job. But yeah, idiots still take their word and all this other hot garbage. But, but the simple matter is, oh my God, when it comes to something like this, you just can't push this guy as sympathetic. You just can't do it. And it's so unbelievably ridiculous. you got all these defenders talking about, well, imagine if you go here and then you just sit there and do it. Yeah, it's stupid to pay your money to go to an event and freaking hijack it and chant all this stupid crap. You serve absolutely no notice at all when you have paid money to get into the event. Because at that point, WWE has already won. I completely agree with that. Completely agree with that assertion. But it also speaks to this bigger problem within WWE that they are so insecure. And you see this in the way they present their product. Everything is about biggest and best and history making. Every show is the greatest show of all motherfucking time. Never can admit there's a bad show. Never can admit any of their faults or shortcomings. And I understand that maybe you don't feel like that's a great thing to do all the time. And I don't disagree with that. You don't want to constantly be running down your own product, but at some point in time, you have to be aware enough and have to be secure enough to be able to acknowledge and admit some of your faults and shortcomings because it makes you more organic. It makes you feel real. And the WWE is frankly a bunch of phony baloney bullshit because all they're trying to do is pump smoke up your ass all these times. And all these people talking about, it comes down to that mindset of blaming the customers if you are in a business and you are blaming your customer number one if that's your company's mission statement it is easily the most retarded mission statement of all time WWE where the fans are the real issue like imagine that taking that to a bank and say hey I want a hundred million dollars to start this business and I think it's gonna be fantastic what's your mindset Customers are stupid, and they're always the ones to blame when something goes wrong. 
how do you think that's going to go? And it gets down to this ridiculous point where everybody's so black and white on this. And we live in a very gray space in this world. There's very little actual black and white. There is a lot of nuance, a lot of context that can often be lacking. So when you have these idiots, whether the fuckboy fans or the fuckboys and girls in the wrestling business that say this dumb shit, it just feeds into this insecurity within wrestling, this big bunch of pussies that they are, that they can't handle criticism. If you can't handle the heat, then get out of the fucking kitchen, you mamby-pamby wusses. If you can't admit that it's not the fans that are the fault here, it is the company and sometimes the performers that are at the fault here. Look, as a customer, I can say whatever I want. As a customer, if I fork over that money, if I don't like the show, then I don't like the show. But if the company doesn't like that I don't like the show, then fuck them. That's tough shit on them. Put out a better fucking product. And you don't have to worry about that. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here. It does not have to be rocket science. But if you're trying to make Roman Reigns the top guy, then make him a badass. Stop sitting there and tiptoeing through the tulips. Make the people smell the fucking roses. Either go with them or don't go with them. Stop pussyfooting around. Because the excuses that are made are absolutely pathetic and completely and totally ridiculous and solve nothing. You know, just the complaining of the Roman Reigns sucks and everything about him sucks and fuck the company. That's not helping either. It feels like we're in a village of idiots at this point in time. But to me, you could make it a little better if you presented Roman Reigns a different way. WWE, please, stop trying to make people feel sorry for Roman Reigns. They do not want to have sympathy for him. He does not work trying to get sympathy from them. And continuing to try and go down that path is the same type of stupidity that you did for years with Cena that drove away fans. And it did. Don't make excuses, people. Don't sit there and pretend that it didn't. It drove a lot of people away from wrestling. Why would you want to go down that same path that had some real negative consequences? No matter how much financial finagling you try to pull and still pull to this day, why would you want to saddle another guy with that for the next decade and hook your wagon to that? Like you've seen the guys that are the biggest, the brightest, the best, and the best money makers for you, and they're not fucking John Cena. So why in the hell are you trying to make another John Cena? And like a special Olympics version of him at that. Roman's a decent athlete. He's a decent looking dude. A lot of the adult males, maybe they don't have to like him. He could be for kids. He could be for women. But you can make him a little more tolerable. A little more relatable. I look at a Roman Reigns and I look, let's say, at a Daniel Bryan. Even me not being much of a Daniel Bryan guy. I can look at Daniel Bryan and say, it is a lot easier to potentially feel sorry for this pathetic ass. Because all these things are stacked against him. He's much more easily relatable if you go down that path. Regardless of what the hardcore fans might think, if you made Daniel Bryan a, a badass, it's idiotic. It would be every bit as bad of booking as trying to make Roman Reigns sympathetic. Book and write to the natural talents of the performers. Book and write to what is going to accentuate the positives and hide the negatives of your performers. Not this modern WWE that hashtag ruins everything. By doing the exact opposite and putting these guys in the worst situations. Stop trying to get sympathy for Roman Reigns. It's not working. It hasn't worked. And it's going to continue to not work and only turn off more of your fans. Which again, as much as you might want to blame your paying customers, 
If they don't like it, it's not their fault. It's your fault, WWE. Do something about it.